Every day we're scared into thinking that we can't do anything about our high blood pressure. Day in and day out, I hear from people that are struggling with high blood pressure and their doctors are telling them that if they don't change their diet, if they don't change their exercise routine, or if they don't change their lifestyle, they're gonna end up dying because of their high blood pressure. Now I'm not saying that those doctors are wrong, but what I am saying is we need to look at the bigger picture. We need to look at some other things outside of just the good old fashioned changing your diet and adding more exercise. Hey, my name is Thomas DeLauer, and if you haven't already, I want to make sure that you hit that subscribe button for three to five videos per week that are going live on my channel. And if you're already a subscriber, you know the drill. Hit that little bell so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a video. It's imperative. All right, so what I want to talk about in this video is how magnesium actually affects blood pressure. You see, as we are progressing through various forms of research, we're starting to find that there's a lot more to blood pressure than what we thought. We used to just think that it was kind of a sodium thing, how our bodies were sensitive to sodium and how that would ultimately affect the overall water retention, how it would overall affect just how we're constricting blood vessels, et cetera, et cetera. But as we go forward, we're learning that minerals really do play a bigger role outside of just sodium. So when it comes down to magnesium, it's pretty powerful. And I want to reference this entire video surrounding one particular meta-analysis study. Now, for those of you that have watched my videos before, you know that a meta-analysis is a study that takes a look at a bunch of different studies aggregated together. So in this particular one, we took a look at a study that was published in the American Journal of Hypertension. This is a journal that specializes in blood pressure. So blood pressure research looking at all kinds of different studies. And this one particular meta-analysis took a look at 34 different studies that had a total of 2,000 patients. So this is a very big study. These are the kind of studies you want to look at that give you a very solid, definitive answer. So the studies that they looked at were what are called randomized placebo studies, which means that the subjects did not know whether they were receiving a placebo or if they were receiving magnesium. Now, since we looked at a lot of different studies, it ranged anywhere from 248 milligrams of magnesium that were given to the subjects all the way up to 960 milligrams of magnesium that were given to the subjects. So what they did is they looked at all these studies, and some of these ranged from three weeks all the way up to eight months, and they took a look at where the average balance would change in terms of someone's blood pressure or where the average change would just generally occur. And what they found is after about three months on average, if you consumed approximately 368 milligrams of magnesium, you were expected to see approximately a two millimeter of mercury decrease in your systolic and a 1.8 millimeter of mercury decrease in your diastolic blood pressure. And then researchers later on, after digging into the research even more, found that really only after a month you would see a big difference. That's pretty darn powerful. And it may not sound like a whole lot when you're looking at the big picture, but when it's just one simple factor that you're changing, that is very powerful. This is not changing the diet and not changing exercise. Now, you might be wondering, how the heck is this happening? What's going on within the body? Well, let's talk about that. The first thing it has to do with is something known as prostacyclin. See, prostacyclin is a hormone-like compound within the body. It's not a specific hormone, and it's not a steroid hormone. It doesn't have a cholesterol attached to it, but it's a hormone-like compound, which means it has some attributes of hormones, but it also has some attributes of enzymes as well. And magnesium is responsible for over 350 different enzymatic functions within the body. So this prostacyclin actually relieves tension within the blood vessels. It doesn't relieve tension surrounding the blood vessels. It actually allows the blood vessels themselves to relax. So it's sort of a chain reaction. Now, of course, we have the other more direct way that magnesium affects our blood pressure, and that's the fact that it's a muscle relaxant. You see, in our bodies, different minerals have different effects. And for example, calcium is excitatory, meaning it triggers muscles to contract and stay tense, whereas magnesium triggers them to relax and not contract. So it's the balance between the two. So when we have too much calcium in our bodies, what ends up happening is we end up having very tight muscles, but also tighter vessels and tighter muscles that surround our arteries. You see, believe it or not, we have small muscles that actually surround our arteries, and they assist the heart in moving blood throughout the course of the body. So it's not always about our heart being strong or our heart being weak. Sometimes it's more about how the muscles contract and relax at a specific time in tandem with the heart to move the blood throughout the body. So when magnesium is in the equation, it allows those muscles to relax, which allows more blood flow, but more importantly, it allows the heart to take a little bit of a break in between beats. So it's not constantly having this back pressure on the heart. It's the back pressure on the heart that can cause a big problem later on down the line. So your heart gets a chance to relax, the blood flows a little bit better, circulation is better, nutrient delivery is better, everyone is happier. So I hope this video clears that up. 
doesn't mean that you don't need to reduce sodium. It doesn't mean that you don't need to change your diet and exercise more. But it does mean that we need to look at the bigger picture. And as with many things, such as cholesterol, we're learning that it's not always what the American Medical Journal has put out there. There's new research every day that's bringing light to some really amazing yet simple things that you can do to help your body. I'll see you in the next video.